healthy, young, normal weight men were asked to consume a low carb diet. And the researchers then took health measures to see what effect the diet would have with a special emphasis on cholesterol size. What do you think happened? Well, that's what we'll find out along with learning a bit on genetic backgrounds in relation to cholesterol. Learn your body, a science based education. The study I began describing was conducted by researchers that wanted to know how low carb diets affect healthy men. Do they have negative implications? So they recruited 20 healthy, young, normal weight men and instructed 12 of them to consume a low carb diet consisting of less than 10% carbohydrates, 60% dietary fat with no restrictions on the type of fat. The other group, the remaining eight men, consumed a control diet that consisted of higher carbohydrates and less fat. That diet was called the habitual diet. Both groups of men were instructed to consume enough to maintain their weight, but only the control habitual diet group maintained their weight, while the low carbohydrate group did experience a small reduction in body weight, about two kilograms. I'll point out some of the other notable differences, but for any added detail, check out the attached notes. First, both groups were on their respective diets for six weeks, and the low-carb diet group managed to only consume 8% of their diet from carbohydrates, so they held up their end of the deal. They also consumed 25% saturated fat of their total fat, and the habitual diet consumed almost 60% of their diet from carbohydrates, and about half as much saturated fat, but their diet was also only 25% dietary fat compared to the low-carb's 60%. Finally, the low carb group consumed almost seven times more dietary cholesterol as well. Now, what did the researchers find? Well, focusing in on cholesterol, the multiple measures of cholesterol, let's begin with total low density lipoprotein and high density lipoprotein. All three cholesterol types and lipoproteins that make up these cholesterol measures were elevated after three weeks on the low carbohydrate diet. However, these metrics reduced again after six weeks. The same was not seen in the habitual low fat, higher carbohydrate diet group. Interestingly, their triglyceride levels, also commonly called their blood fats, were reduced by a large margin in the low carbohydrate group with no effect in the habitual diet. Now, before moving on to blood sugar, insulin, and the like, if you'll allow me to dive a bit deeper into the cholesterol aspect, let's touch a bit on the cholesterol size. It is believed in the scientific literature, according to the researchers, that smaller cholesterol particles cause more harm than larger particles because they remain in the bloodstream longer and are more prone to being damaged, known as oxidation. This damage and accumulation of cholesterol particles leads to greater inflammatory reactions as immune cells are recruited to deal with these damaged particles, causing potential blockages in the arteries. I won't go too much further into the pathophysiology at the moment, but just know that the smaller cholesterol particles are considered more dangerous. So does a low carbohydrate diet change the size of the cholesterol particles? Well, it turns out that after six weeks of being on the low carbohydrate diet, there was a shift to larger cholesterol particles overall. Now, interestingly, the researchers wanted to get a bit more specific. So they separated the data according to which men were predisposed to having larger or smaller cholesterol particles. Men with a pattern A genetic background are less prone to small cholesterol particles. So what cholesterol particles they have tends to be larger already. However, pattern B genetic background men have smaller cholesterol particles. The researchers found something really intriguing after separating the groups according to their genetic background. The pattern A individuals saw no benefit of the low carbohydrate diet on their cholesterol particle size as it did not budge. It remained larger with low levels of small, dense cholesterol particles. However, not so for the pattern B individuals. They experienced a shift from more small, dense cholesterol particles to larger, less dense particles. This means the low carbohydrate diet increases the size of cholesterol particles in those with hereditary risk of more small, dense particles, but not in those without that genetic basis. So that's really super interesting. Okay, enough on cholesterol. Let's discuss the effect on blood sugar and insulin. 
Unsurprisingly, the low carbohydrate group experienced substantial reductions in insulin, yet there were no reductions in blood sugar. Still, even without a shift in blood sugar, this might imply without actual measures that insulin sensitivity might have been improved. Now, there was no effect of the higher carbohydrate diet on insulin or blood sugar. No surprise there. Okay, so what's going on here? That's a lot of information, but what happened to these guys that led to these results, according to the researchers? Well, other studies have shown increases in cholesterol and decreases in blood fats, and the researchers point out that this might be due to reductions in very low-density lipoproteins, another cholesterol measure. Cholesterol particles, or lipoproteins, come in different sizes and with slightly different structures. Very low density, low density, high density, and there are others as well. But for the sake of simplicity, let's stick with these. All of them added together make up the total cholesterol in the blood. I didn't show the data, but VLDL levels decreased in the low carb group, which may have boosted the number of low density lipoproteins, LDL, and high density lipoprotein, HDL, thereby increasing total cholesterol. It is also possible the VLDL levels may have been lower because they have the capacity to carry triglycerides during fasting to various tissues. But since these men were consuming a low carbohydrate diet, they were consuming such large amounts of triglycerides that they were packaged into other particles known as chylomicrons from the intestines, reducing the reliance on VLDL particles to ship these fats around the bloodstream. Think of it like two different bus systems of triglycerides. One is VLDL and the other is chylomicrons. If the fats are primarily pa being packaged and carried by chylomicrons, then they are, there's less need for VLDL, so the numbers drop. Now, as we also saw, cholesterol particle size increased on the low-carbohydrate diet, but only for the pattern B individuals, those predisposed to having smaller LDL, low-density lipoproteins. Recollect that smaller, denser LDL particles are associated with higher cardiovascular risk. So although unexplained, the low-carbohydrate diet was beneficial to only those with a particular genetic background. As for the reductions in insulin, those are likely due to the cell's reliance on fats for energy instead of carbohydrates. So the production of insulin was markedly dropped since insulin is primarily secreted from the elevation of blood sugar from the carbohydrate consumption. So all in all, this study tells us that young, healthy, normal weight men may experience a slight initial rise in blood cholesterol levels, yet if they are a man with a genetic predisposition for smaller, more dense cholesterol particles, the low-carbohydrate diet will reverse this genetic effect and it will also lower blood insulin levels, but does not seem to have a significant effect on blood sugar. Now, clearly, this isn't the only study, so I'd encourage for you to uh, continue onward and dive into the series of studies on the topic and become well-educated, or skip the drama and jump straight to my final verdict, where I put it all together for you with confidence behind many studies. So, speak to you then. Bye.